Hey everybody, Matt from Eastwood. We're here in the Eastwood garage doing another live tech session for you guys on Facebook, YouTube, and also Eastwood.com. Uh, if you guys haven't watched one of these before, we try to make it pretty interactive. So we want you guys to log in on Facebook and YouTube and join us on the chat. Scotty C is out on vacation, so uh, we got uh, somebody stepping in here for him. <laughs> yes, I hope I can. Hope I can make Scotty C proud again. And um, oh, uh, next Thursday. Next Thursday, we have a very special uh, live video at 3 o'clock. We've got Condon Skelly Collective Car Insurance. So if you have any questions about collective car insurance, or um, they even insure uh, project cars. So if your car is uh, working its way through um, uh, the restoration, you can even insure it as that. So, so next Thursday, mark out your calendar if you want to join us for that. Um, we have the guy here from Condon Skelly. He's going to answer all your questions. So any cool. question you have about insurance, he's uh, willing to answer. So let's, let's do some powder coating. Sweet. So today, uh, last week actually, I should say, uh, we did a little bit of powder coating uh, prep. So we did a little discussion about setting up a part for powder coating, and uh, we just kind of showed you the steps that we suggest to take for that. Um, we have a couple of shots. Uh, I don't know if we have them queued up there that we can show of the process um, ahead of time that we did. So these are the parts that we started with, um, and we just used some media blasting in our blast cabinet. Uh, again, this version is recorded, so you guys can watch the whole thing, given all the tips. But uh, these are some motorcycle parts that uh, Cody that's doing the Camaro in here, uh, he's also had, got a little motorcycle project, so we're, he was kind enough to let us use the parts. So we blasted some of those ahead of time. What we did is we went ahead and powder coated a couple of the parts. I chose uh, gloss black, so if uh, Joe can get in here a little closer, we will show you guys the gloss black that came out on two of the parts that we did, so the pedal and this bracket here. Um, and came out real nice because we, we took the time to blast them, get them really clean and wipe them down everything with pre like we mentioned. Uh, they came out pretty much blemish free. Very little uh, orange, orange peel in these parts. So there is uh, a nice smooth finish and actually has a little bit of reflective, uh, you can actually kind of see yourself in it, which is nice. And this is a single Single coating, so we didn't add a clear or anything to this, and this is our uh, high gloss black right here. So that's the parts that are already uh, coated here. I think we have a couple shots as well we can just show you of uh, before we were setting up. Uh, we don't have any of those? All right, well then we'll show you live. Why don't we do that? <laughs> so I'm using a dual voltage gun here um, to show you on this last part that we blasted in, in, in the shots uh, that you saw just a few minutes ago. So we have this, uh, this cover here, and what I've done is I have some of these, we sell a kit of the silicone uh, plugs that you can put in. Now these are nice because they're not going to be affected by the temperatures used to, um, to actually heat the powder and cure it. So we have those in there. You definitely want to put those in areas where there might be a, to a tight tolerance fit, uh, where, you, where a seal or a gasket goes, uh, so that you don't have to grind or sand that out at a later time or use a file. So I have those all plugged in there. Uh, I'm using the dual voltage powder gun today and we're going to show you guys actually applying the powder. Uh, if you have any questions as we're setting all this up or, or problems if you've had with powder coating you want us to answer some for you. Uh, Randy's pretty well versed in powder coating as and myself and we can answer those for you. Um, so first big thing a mistake that I used to make is I didn't wear, um, didn't put nitrile gloves or rubber gloves on when doing powder coating. And what happens is you always end up touching the part at some point. You need to move it around or adjust it. And usually what happens is if you have some grease or just the oils in your hand can, can get on the part. And if it's a freshly blasted part, uh, that's going to get on the part and could cause some issues with adhesion. So just getting a set of gloves and wearing them before you actually start powder coating is a good uh, first step. So using the dual voltage, you're able to just screw the powder coating bottle that you get right from Mustard Eastwood right into the gun. So you don't have to spill powder or waste powder by dump dumping it between containers. You can thread it right on. Um, and as I mentioned, we're using the high gloss black today. The uh, dual voltage gun, as it sounds, has two voltages that you can use. Um, sort of a personal preference, but there is an actual use for it. Um, sometimes what happens is if you're at the higher uh, voltage and you're trying to get into a tight area, um, it can cause an issue where the powder will kind of repel 
um, and won't stick. So you can actually turn it down to the lower voltage here uh, to do those tighter areas. But if you're doing a, a big, not a big area, but a large area that you want to cover a lot, you can, you can leave it on the higher, uh, the higher voltage here. And it's got the little finger switch. Oop, there we go. So this little finger switch here is what we actually hit to make the connection to create the charge. Um, and then when we hit the trigger on the, on the powder gun, it's going to emit the powder out, puff it out, and then because it's, we got the ground cable connected here to our, our piece that our part's sitting on, it's going to make the connection actually uh, start clinging the powder to it. Now I have our little emitter on the end here. Um, you can put this on and press it all the way on, depending what you're doing. Um, and you want just about an eighth inch sticking out like that. What that does, it kind of, this little def deflector will allow the powder to kind of go around and give a nice conical shape when it's, when it's spraying. It isn't required, depending on what you're doing, you may or may not want to do that. It's all kind of a personal preference. This will give a little bit of a softer flow out um, instead of just dumping the powder on so you can cover it a little more evenly. So next thing is I got my air hose here. And if you guys are using a um, nice thing about powder coating is it doesn't really require any real um, a large amount of CFM or a large amount of pressure. A lot of times, five to ten psi is uh, good on this. And what I like to do is I put a regulator right here at, at the gun, so we can see where we're at. We can see we're just a little under. There we go might be hard to see but we're just we're just a little under 10 so when I'm pushing the trigger it's gonna hit maybe about seven or so nice mid-range there uh, but you don't want to go too much over 10 psi because it's gonna start really dumping the powder out and you might get a little bit too much of a build on a part which can uh, some cause some issues or cause uh, even some orange peel effect by doing that so we have that set up already and you can adjust it if you guys are using a small air compressor just like a, a real uh, a real cheap small air compressor, you can even use like a pancake compressor, which we offer. Um, or even if you're just doing a real small part, I've even seen people have used air tanks that they have filled up that you can do that. But you, obviously, um, you know, you can't do a lot of spraying with that. So get set up here. And I'm going to put my little face mask on first. All right. So we've got a finger switch. So what we're going to do is you push the finger switch in because I have the ground connected. You can see how it's drawing it right onto the part. I'm just kind of hovering above. You don't need to get too close to the part. And this is a pretty small part, so I mean we're practically coated already. I'm just going to get on this side. Make sure I get all those little areas in there. So before we put it in, I'll let Joe get in close. You can see the, uh, let me just hang our cord here. So you guys can see the, what it looks like before you spray. The first couple times you might powder coat, kind of confusing because it's not going to look like what your final uh, product's going to be. It's going to be a real flat look uh, to the part. So just want to check it, make sure you didn't miss any spots or anything because you do have a last chance to spray a little more if there's an area that you might have missed. Because I had it on the higher voltage, it just kind of clung all around the part. The bottom side of the part is, is blasted and very clean as well, so it had a really good connection. So we were able to, uh, to coat that really quick. So next thing we'll do is we'll show you the process for putting it in the oven. Uh, so over here we have our powder coating oven. It's a nice mid-range or mid-sized oven. Um, this is set up for powder coating, so it has the, uh, the temperature goes all the way from 450 down to a, to a low um, and I'll, I'll, of course an on off. It has a timer on it which is really handy. So uh, for most of our powders, generally speaking, uh, other than some of the clears or the reflective uh, chrome, you're going you're gonna to preheat the oven to 450 degrees. We're going to put the part in the oven and uh, we're going to let it flow out, which we'll kind of show you. Happen. It'll happen pretty quickly since we have it preheated. Um, and then you're going to turn it down to 400 degrees. Some of our clears or reflective chromes may be uh, like 350 or 375 where you actually cure it at after it's flowed out. Um, if you check the bottle, we always put that right on the side of the bottle so you can be sure. So I have a little infrared thermometer here. 
just to make sure that we're about in the range where we need to be. So, you good, Joe? Right. So, we'll shoot that in there. And it quickly drops. So, yeah, we're right around, actually, in the back corner here, we're 451. It's, it's floating around. So, we're, we're right in the, the good range. I've had that on for maybe, I don't know, 20 minutes or so. Uh, it took to get up to that temperature. Uh, the oven is going to be hot, so it's good to throw another set of gloves on if you can um, because this handle or the glass can get a little warm here. So with our oven and this stand I have here, it's pretty nice. It works together. The stand has a little um, clip that you can put on. Some of the other parts that we sprayed uh, ahead of time, we actually hung them off of this, but this one has a little clamp so you can actually slide your rack right in and kind of put it on and off pretty quickly. So I'm going to open the oven real, real quick here and make sure you drop any additional comments because we'll have a few minutes to do some comments here. Putting that in. We'll close it up and then we'll check on it here in a few minutes. And that's basically it. We're just going to let it uh, cure. Like I said, I'm leaving it at the 450 until I start to see it flow out. Uh, when it's flowing out, you'll see it go from a powder to a liquid, it'll get start getting shiny. That's when we know it's flowing out and we can crank it down to the 400 uh, to let it cure for about 20 minutes. Any questions we have while this is doing its thing? Um, yeah, uh, can you use a house oven? And if so, does it have to be electric? Okay, uh, that's probably one of the biggest questions we get is can you use a house oven and does it need to be electric? Um, we do not suggest using the house oven that you're going to use for um, making dinner. Number one, your significant other is probably not going to be happy or your roommate when they uh, smell the powder baking in your house. Um, number two, it, it's not good to, you know, the, the fumes, there is a little bit of fumes that come out. You don't want that obviously in an oven that you're cooking food. Uh, we generally suggest an electric oven is best. Um, do not suggest to use something that has like an open flame, I guess, um, oven. Uh, if you're trying to do something that's larger, um, you could use a repurposed house oven, um, but we don't really, um, we'll leave that up to you to kind of figure out. If you're doing something that's small, uh, small to medium parts, th this oven here can handle most of those. Uh, it's set up for powder co coating. It kind of has the, uh, the timer and the, and the temperature is already set up on it, so it's real quick and easy to set it up where uh, something else may not be that, that simple to do. Good one. <clears throat> um, we have another question. I did sure. remember to turn on my mic. I hear at the beginning, I didn't have my mic turned oh. on. So Scott EC would definitely not be oh, proud. Man. He'd be very disappointed in me. So I should remind everybody if you're watching right now, next Thursday, June 8th, we have Condon Skelly Collector Car Insurance in here, and they're going to be taking all your questions. So if you've ever had a question about collector car insurance, um, next Thursday at 3 o'clock is the time um, to tune in. Um, send us your questions, and uh, we'll answer all of them. And the cool thing is they even insure cars as they're being restored. So if you have a project, um, they'll insure it and they can tell you how to do that and how to, you know, and um, if you make improvements to your car, uh, how you can also increase your insurance. So cool. not to disappoint Scotty by having my mic turned off. <laughs> but um, yeah, there was another question. Um, sure. Can you powder over powder? If you oh, good one. Layers? Um, we had a question. Uh, can you powder over top of, of uh, another powder coating um, layer? Uh, the dual vo voltage gun is really good for that. The, the higher voltage is, is, the, um, is the other good use for that, is doing multiple coatings. Um, the, it, it is possible. The only thing I will suggest, because I don't know the, what they're looking for in this question, if it's a part that's been powder coated for a long time, uh, ahead of time, and you're trying to put something over top of it, just make sure that you, you have powder that's not flaking or having any issues or anything like that. But if you're trying to do multiple coats, get like a translucent effect uh, is no problem at all. Depending on how many coats you're doing, uh, this gun will do multiple, multiple coats. Sometimes you may need to do what's called hot flocking where you will uh, heat the part and put the powder on while the part's still hot or warm um, and it'll help with the adhesion. But by using the dual voltage gun, uh, you can use the higher voltage and you can do multiple coats. Uh, Similar, you can get a similar effect like this timing cover we have here. Um, so the, some of these coatings you're going to be using like our reflective chrome and then you put a translucent over top of it and it'll give you that, that crazy effect there. So it's kind of just uh, up to your imagination what you can do. 
And if you guys want to see some of these different coatings, uh, Bo, Randy, and a few people here, we've, we've done videos over the years of showing some of the, the chromes and translucents. So if you look up on YouTube, just search powder coating, or we have a little section right there when you're on our page on YouTube uh, that's powder coating videos. You can scroll through those and find some of them. So that's all we got for questions right now. That's all we have right now. I'm actually cool. posting some of those durability uh, videos. Oh, cool. A few, a few people asked about the durability of powder. So like you said, we've done some. Uh, we hit, you know, hit hit parts with hammers. Yeah. Uh, did a aluminum foil and balled it up. So we have those videos out there. Yeah, the durability is going to be. I mean, it's it's basically one of the best. It's definitely the best coating you can do at home. That's for sure. Um, a lot of you guys might not know, but Eastwood is pretty much the first one to bring powder coating uh, to the home use. So uh, many years ago, we made our first hot coat gun, and we were pretty much the first ones to bring it uh, to the home use for. Uh, customers to use themselves in their garage, which really changed the game for a lot of you guys and gals with your project cars. Um, and it's really nice. It's, it really makes a durable coating and you can get some pretty cool effects if you do some practicing, especially with the dual voltage gun. So <clears throat> let's show, we're just about there. I don't know if you want to get in close enough here, but you can definitely see the, uh, we're pretty much flowed out here. All right. Ready? Yeah, All right. Mm -hmm. So you can see we're really, you can see it went from being that flat powdery look of the powder to we got a nice glossy finish. It's, st it's still, still going to flow out a little bit more, but this is pretty much flowed out now where we can turn it back down to 400 degrees, uh, set our timer for about 20 minutes and let this, uh, this fully cure. Like you notice, notice the silicone plugs, they're not, they're not bothered by the heat whatsoever. Uh, so they're, they can stay in there through the whole process, which is nice. Uh, one thing to note when it's, when it's just fluid out like this, it might be um, tempting to touch the part, do not. Uh, there is a small period between powder flowing out and curing where the powder can uh, if you touch it, you can put a fingerprint in it, kind of like if you have paint that hasn't cured fully. So uh, pretty much don't touch it at this point. And once it starts uh, starting to cure, then it'll get to the point where you can actually touch the part and move it around. So we're going to close this up. I'm going to turn this down here to 400. Like I said, our oven's kind of set for the, the common temperatures that you're going to use. Um, I'm going to turn this to 20 minutes here. And we'll let this cure fully. And after 20 minutes, we can, uh, we can shut the oven off. We can pull this out, set it on the bench, let it uh, cool down naturally. And then we can handle the part no problem. And it, uh, it's pretty much ready to go. And it'll look just like the ones we uh, did already. Any other questions we have? Um, do the parts have to be blasted to be uh, powder coated? Oh, good one. Yeah, that's Since that's really how good. these were done. Yeah, that's, that's a good one. So. Um, I probably, my first handful of years, even before I worked here, I didn't have a blast cabinet myself and I was powder coating. Um, it takes a little bit more time. It's a little more tedious. We do have our, uh, down to metal, um, liquid, um, powder remover that you can apply right on the part. And that will pretty much get you 80 or 90% of the way there. Uh, but then you may need to wire brush or you may need to sand the part a little bit more to get it, uh, get a little bit of tooth in it. Uh, so that it'll actually grab. Uh, but at the very least, you need to get it to bare, bare metal. You don't want any types of grease, uh, contaminants, old paint, anything like that that's on the part. If you even see a little bit of that um, and you put it in the oven, a lot of times it's going to outgas and it's going to pop up for you and cause an issue. Um, so make sure if you're doing it, uh, use a chemical stripper if possible first. And then from there, um, use some sort of mechanical, whether it's a wire brush or it's a sander or something like that to... Uh, to give it a little bit more, um, a little more texture to it so the powder can grab. But cleanliness is probably the most important thing. Good one. Um, can you over cure the, um, the powdered parts? Oh, yeah, that's actually, uh, we don't get that too often, but that's a good one. About, uh, question was, can we over cure uh, powder? And yes, it is possible. The, the, the most, um, I should say, you should be the most careful when you're doing translucents, our chromes, uh, our clears, uh, because what can happen with those if you over cure them, 
uh, it can actually make them turn yellow or brown or discolor. Um, basically what it'll do is it kind of like burn the, it'll, it'll kind of like not burn, but it'll, it'll change the color of it and make it look like burnt. So it is possible. Try and keep it in that 20 to 30 minutes of curing. Uh, if it's a really big part, like say a wheel or something like that that you're doing, sometimes I'll leave it in like for 30 minutes or so just to make sure that all the heat gets in it fully cures. Um, if it's a really large part like that and you're afraid of over curing, uh, you can do the, you can, can preheat the part so you get a little bit of heat into it, especially if it's cast, and that'll help a little bit with the, uh, making sure you just do the normal 20, 20 to 30 minute range and you're not over, over curing it. Good. Any other? Oh, my mic's still on. Now, now, now I'm not forgetting to shut it off. Um, are there any, uh, are there any options for curing besides ovens? Ah, yes. Uh, so we had a question about uh, other methods for curing the powder. Um, the biggest thing is, is that you need to be able to get the, the part up to the surface up to 450 degrees to get the powder to flow out. Um, we do offer um, some heat lamps that you can use specifically for painting or powder coating to cure the powder. Um, if it's a large part, you're going to have to move it around and, and cure the areas you know, sections as you go, which isn't a problem, it's just a little more tedious. Um, but that's pretty much one of the only uh, tried and true methods is using an oven or using one of those, those heat lamps um, like that. We have heard of people using other methods, but um, it's not something that's, uh, you're gonna get the best adhesion out of it. That's all the questions cool. for, for now, it looks like. So we pretty much got this, we got about 10 minutes left on this and then we're gonna be able to pull this out. But uh, you guys can see how quick, you know, from spraying the powder to putting it in the oven, we're already floored out. The part's pretty much done at this point. We just uh, either need to watch your, watch your oven or if you got a timer on it, like the, uh, the Eastwood powder oven here, uh, it'll just ding for us and shut off and then we can let it cool and we're ready to go with the part. We can pull the silicone plugs out, put them back in the bag and use them again, so. That is the process, and hopefully this uh, helps you guys be a little, um, a little more informed when you're doing powder coating if you're just trying to get into it. Um, it's kind of anything that can handle the heat can be powder coated. So we have some pretty cool uh, video as well of doing glass. Um, you can do glass even with it, which is pretty cool. So uh, just make sure it can hold up to the temperatures that, you're, uh, that we're curing, and you're good to go. You can make uh, really cool stuff. So if you guys have anything that you've powder coated, that you would like to show off. Uh, feel free to drop us some photos in the comments and we'll repost them on our social media outlets for you guys um, to give you guys a little bit of shout out. So uh, that's it for questions? Yeah. Cool. That's All it right. today. Awesome. And like I said, don't forget next Thursday, yes. Condon Skelly, Condon Skelly Collector Car Insurance. Cool. Um, next Thursday, June 8th, and they'll be taking all your questions. Sweet. All right, well, that's all I got, guys. We're gonna let this thing bake and then we're gonna pull it out and Cody's got a few parts that are looking nice. So thanks guys for watching. We'll catch you next week.